Hi everyone, my name is Beth Friedman. I am the Director of Outreach and Summer Session here at Phillips Academy, coming to you sort of live uh, from Cooley House. You can hear the sounds of the Pan Athletic Center construction in the background. Um, and I'm speaking not in my role as Director of Summer and Outreach, but instead in my capacity as the current Chair of the System Subcommittee of Andover's Anti-Racism Task Force. And I say current because I came off the bench to serve in this role. Uh, we were initially led by the incredible Dr. Tiffany Joseph, who is an alum of both PA and of the IRT, the Institute for Recruitment of Teachers, which is one of our four wonderful outreach programs. Um, when she went out on maternity leave, I stepped in, and though I can't possibly fill her shoes, I just feel really lucky to have the opportunity to do this work and engage in the kind of analysis that will, I hope, be part of moving Andover towards becoming an anti-racist institution. Um, the work is particularly important to me because I feel like my role and the programs I support are all geared towards overwhelmingly BIPOC communities. You know, Andover Breadloaf, PALS, IRT, MS Squared, these all work directly with Black, Indigenous students of color um, and the ways in which Phillips Academy leverages its resources to support communities beyond its campus bounds is something really unique among secondary schools. Um, you know, as a white woman, I, I know I can't ever truly understand the experience our BIPOC community members have had here at Andover, um, but I can strive to listen and to learn and to use my own positional influence to make some positive change. Um, becoming an anti-racist institution is really far from simple. So particularly when we talk about systems, so uh, because systemic racism is just highly complex and it can result from the interplay of multiple systems, the work of our subcommittee has really been to try to disentangle that here at Andover. Um, we've gotten great insight into the systems at work here at the Academy and, and our charge has been to identify, document, and analyze the impact of the many systems, both explicit systems and stated, and those that are implicit and unstated, uh, that drive the overall experience of BIPOC community members here. So, you know, we've spoken with leaders and staff from all sorts of offices here at the Academy, digging into things like the disciplinary and housing processes with the Dean of Students and learning from the Dean of Faculty and Human Resources about the hiring process, the ways in which managers are trained and supported, the ways in which employee performance is overseen. We've discussed advising, student support structures, even scheduling with the Dean of Studies and just so much more. Um, we've conducted this laundry list of interviews, which is nearly impossible to capture in a short video, but uh, all of this work has been with the intent of understanding how BIPOC families and students learn about Andover, how they access resources here, how they engage with the academic and residential programs, and then how they're supported in their journeys beyond senior year. So in calling through years of department reports, of data analyses, and notes from forums and conversations with students, with families, and alumni, we've been looking for trends and themes and the ways in which these policies interact to create the current environment for BIPOC community members, and then to use that to make recommendations about what could shift and where the institution could go from here. So I don't think that our subcommittee would ever claim to have all the answers, um, but the process of listening and learning, of systematically approaching the challenges of the academy and, and looking at strategic and systematic changes that could move Andover towards being an anti-racist institution, um, that's the beginning. Um, this is one step in a long journey that won't be easy, but which is an incredibly important one to take.